let's get started with Kangaroos and Kiwis. Australia and New Zealand are programmed in uh, October and November of, of next year. So for those of you who have not participated in one of our webinars before, or perhaps you're new to Wheel and Anchor, I'd like to give you a little bit of a, uh, an insight into, uh, as to what we are all about. Uh, and uh, so Wheel and Anchor, uh, I'm just gonna wait for the slide to change. <laughs> Wheel and Anchor is all about bringing travelers together. Um, I think I think many of you are, are well aware of that already. It's my vision um, through the many years that I've been involved in traveling with people from from Canada to places all around the world. That when you go with a group of like-minded people who have the same aspiration for um, the the adventure and for the sense of learning and for just that rewarding feeling of visiting um, all the amazing places that the world has to offer. And when you do it with a group of people um, that you have something in common with, it's just, it's even more, uh, it's an, an even greater experience than if you just go on your own. And so that's really what we're about here is about bringing travelers. And, and again, we define travelers as people who already understand that travel is not just about going and sitting on a beach somewhere. There's nothing wrong with that kind of travel. Um, but it's, it's about... Um, that experience of, of learning something new and broadening one's horizons and perspectives. So that's what we're about at Wheel and Anchor. Um, my per personal everybody is, is that you become well-connected and well-traveled. And so uh, most of our members are already quite well-traveled. They've, they've been around Europe and in various continents around the world. Um, and yet, um, and I'm blessed to be extremely well-traveled myself. Uh, and... Um, uh, and yeah, and I, I just, I want that for everybody else is to have a chance to experience as much, uh, as much of the world as possible. And at the same time as the same, in, in the spirit of bringing, uh, bringing travelers together, being connected with people, not just from at home, but also people from different parts of the world. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's what we're aiming to do, um, at, um, uh, at Wheel and Anchor. So let me introduce to you who is on our call today. Uh, and uh, so, as I mentioned myself, my name is Gordon Drager. I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor. Um, we also have Joel Curry, who is uh, my right hand man, our co founder, and providing our technical support uh, for this evening for this morning's webinar and we have Cassandra McKinnon who many of you will may know if you've called into the office before she is our member service services specialist and also going to be hosting this tour to Australia and finally our special guest guest um, Kiri Braid. Kiri is joining us this morning from Australia um, and Kiri um, are you there is, is Kiri's audio working I uh, I'm not sure I haven't been able to hear Kiri's voice yet so we'll uh, we'll hope that that um, we'll hope that that um, that that works because she's calling in at one o'clock in the morning uh, in Australia time and um, yeah anyway there's we seem to have some technical glitch everything worked earlier today <laughs> but you know that's how it is with technology sometimes so Kiri is on the call uh, but it just seems like we can't hear her at the moment. So maybe that will repair itself. So onward with the, with the webinar in any event. <clears throat> um, so first of all, let's, um, let's take a look at uh, where in Australia, so let's take a look at the plan that we're going through today. Um, this is really about you. You are travelers um, and you're clearly interested in uh, Australia and New Zealand. This, these continents that for us is so far away on the other side of the world. I'm here as your guide as usual and, and also an explorer to bring you on a bit of a journey around uh, these countries that we're planning to visit next year in October of 2020 um, to Australia and New Zealand that we're going to uncover and get a little bit of a sense of um, here today. Uh, and uh, looking at uh, the map, of course, everybody can, you know, Australia is about as recognizable as any country when you look at the map. Um, it is 7.7 um, .7 million square kilometers. I mean, it's, it's really, it's obviously a continent into itself uh, and uh, the sixth largest country in the world. But of course, as we all know, much of Australia is completely uh, devoid of people, that whole uh, great Australian desert in the middle of the country that stretches for thousands and thousands of kilometers. Um, so, you know, we'll be visiting uh, some of the key centers uh, along the southern 
and uh, eastern coast of Australia. Of course, New Zealand, its small neighbor consisting of the two islands, famously known as having more sheep than people. <laughs> but uh, a wonderful country. I have not been myself to New Zealand. Um, I've heard wonderful things about it, and uh, I know it's going to be a great experience down there. So let's just jump right in to the program now um, and take a look at the map um, of where it is that we're going. First of all, um, to, from Australia, we're going to be starting the program actually in Melbourne. And uh, so when we depart from Canada, I'll, I'll go through I'll go through that in just a moment. We're going to start in Melbourne, and I'll explain why. Um, we're going to also take in Tasmania on this because I think a visit to Australia is not really complete. Um, without at least getting a sense of um, what this little island that we, you know, we've heard about from Bugs Bunny, we know so little bit about, so little about. Um, we're going to go as well up to uh, Adelaide uh, in the wine country, uh, and then fly all the way up to Cairns, which is of course the gateway, Port Douglas, the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef, before finishing off in Sydney, with then an optional trip out to Uluru. Uh, many of you will know it as Ayers Rock, um, and and back before we continue on to New Zealand. And I'll share with you the New Zealand uh, map when we get there. Um, the program departs uh, on around October the 25th. It really depends where in Canada you'd be flying from. Um, we have various air route options available and as well as various airlines that you, that you can take. Um, so somewhere around October the 25th or the 6th, we'll be departing Canada. We of course fly across the date line. So we arrive into Melbourne, um, on the 27th of October. And again, depending on exactly what um, route that you uh, decide to take, um, you might fly via Hong Kong, you might fly via Sydney um, from Vancouver, but in any event, um, we'll arrive into Melbourne. And uh, Melbourne is actually one of the cities in Australia I have not personally visited, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing city. People, people from Canada, though, those of you uh, that have been uh, down to Australia, have said it's like Sydney is like Toronto and Melbourne is like Vancouver from a vibe standpoint. It's more laid back, um, consistently gets rated as one of the world's most, um, most livable cities. And so I think it's a great place to start the, uh, the program. Um, when we arrive in, again, depending on how you come, you might arrive in the morning, you might arrive in the evening, but that first day, um, whatever's left of it will be there just to relax. Because let's face it, it's a long trip. It's a long way to Australia. Uh, and uh, you'll need a little bit of time to just sort of catch your breath and catch up um, from the jet lag. Um, then on the following day, on the 28th, full day we'll get to explore a little bit of Melbourne and we'll do that on foot so um, as most of you know I like very much for us to do as much as possible on our trips um, um, whether it's walking or using um, local transportation I mean some cases it obviously makes sense to have our own um, bus or mini bus as the case may be um, but Melbourne is really about the walking there's lots of hidden alleys and laneways uh, and uh, Cassandra uh, we got Cassandra uh, Joel, you should um, I'll bring Cassandra in uh, on the audio because Cassandra has uh, um, been in Melbourne before, so I know that she has uh, a few things that she'd like to say about it. Um, in any event, we'll have a um, the morning to, uh, as I say, with our guide to explore some of the hidden alleys and laneways, um, and we'll have the afternoon to to take in the city on our own. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it's seem to be having some, a few technical difficulties this morning. <laughs> okay, because it says Cassandra, but I, that's, I don't think that's Cassandra on the call this morning <laughs> on, the, on that particular window. Not a problem. Um, I'll just continue on and we'll let Joel sort out all the technical problems. Um, sometimes technology gets away from us. Um, so as I say, we'll be have, have a little bit of time to explore Melbourne on our own. Uh, and then uh, the following day, we're going to actually head out of town uh, and we're going to be going um, a little bit into the outback. And as I said at the outset, of course, Australia is known as having this vast desert, this um, huge area that is um, totally um, unpopulated, unpopulated except for these fine creatures. And let's face it, you can't go to Australia without paying a visit to uh, our friends, the kangaroo and the koala. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's funny because... In Australia, I know from my friends that uh, that live down there, you know, they can 
Humans can be seen as pests for some people. I mean, we look at them as these adorable little creatures that hop around. Um, and uh, but uh, although they're quite prevalent, you know, like any like so many species now, they do have to be protected. And we're going to be going into one of the national parks um, where we'll get to see. Uh, these these beautiful animals, um, both the, the kangaroos and the koalas, we can take a picture of this morning. Um, and our visit there will help to uh, to uh, contribute to the the protection of the animals in this particular area. So that'll be our our visit to uh, Melbourne. Uh, and uh, from Melbourne, we're going to fly out uh, down to uh, Hobart, Tasmania. Uh, and so I said we're going to no no sooner do we arrive in the continent of Australia. Um, we're going to um, be uh, um, flying off to this little island called Tasmania. Uh, and uh, the Tas Hobart is the second oldest capital in, um, in Australia, actually. And it's a charming little town um, that has so much to offer. It's got an iconic waterfront that we're going to obviously have a guided tour of. Um, and... Uh, um, you know, we're going to get a chance to, as I say, wander around this, this city on, on our own. Um, and, and again, what makes this place so different is, is that our association with, with Tasmania as Canadians is typically from the cartoon. Um, and so um, while in the free time that we have there, we'll have a chance for those of you who actually want to go and see the Tasmanian devil. Uh, and uh, you, there, they do have a preserve where they have those animals uh, around. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, so then the following day, we're going to have a full day uh, and we're going to um, head out to see some of the most spectacular scenery uh, on uh, in, in this part of Australia. The sea cliffs on the uh, on Tasman are, uh, are the highest in on the continent. Um, we're going to explore some deep sea caves. Uh, and uh, there's a, a tremendous amount of Australian history, nature, and food. So although we're not on the Australian continent itself, um, we, we get to experience a lot of it um, while we're here in, in Tasmania. And of course, the wildlife. We're going to see seals. Um, we might see some penguins. Um, we're going to see all, all kinds of amazing things. So this will be really one of the highlights from a, um, from a scenery standpoint while we're, we're down in Australia. <clears throat> so we're, while we're down in ta um, um, Tasmania, so we're, we're then going to have a full day to explore um, Hobart on our on, on our own. Um, you might want to do a trip up Mount Wellington, which is often covered in clouds, um, but it's the the, the mountain that's uh, most adjacent to uh, to the city. And uh, if, uh, if the weather's good, it's certainly worth a trip up there. They also have this incredible art museum. Museum, privately owned art museum. Kiri was telling me about it earlier this afternoon, um, which, um, uh, which which has this very eclectic collection of art. And the owner is, um, as Kiri described, he's a bit of a crazy guy. Um, but it's really one of the highlights uh, as well um, uh, when we visit uh, when we visit Hobart. So lots to see and do. Um, and uh, from uh, from Hobart, uh, we will then uh, the next day. Um, fly up to back onto the mainland, up to Adelaide, Australia. Adelaide, the capital of the, the province or the state of South Australia. Uh, and you know, it's funny because Adelaide is, is affectionately referred to as the twenty-minute city. And I was kind of wondering why. Why exactly is that? Well, it's not a big city, so apparently you can basically tour the whole thing in about twenty minutes. And that, in fact, that's precisely precisely what we're going to do because the reason that we're heading into Adelaide is really all about. Um, McLaren Vale, uh, which is where we're going to be staying. Uh, so, so we're going to land in Adelaide. Um, it's a city of churches. It has a rich German history. Um, there's really lots there. Um, and uh, so we'll get a, a taste of that as we drive through. But, but as I say, the reason that we're going is for the McLaren Vale. And for those of you who are um, wine people, that will be a term that's um, familiar to you, of course. McLaren Vale is, I like to refer to it as the Bordeaux of Australia. Uh, it's, uh, of course, famous for its Shiraz wines, these full-bodied Australian wines that we at home have come to know and love, for those of you that are red wine drinkers. Um, and we're going to be staying right in the heart of it, in fact, uh, at a beautiful winery called Seferino Wines. So we're staying a winery it's in, in and of itself. Um, we're going to spend a good chunk of the day 
um, touring those wineries. Um, we're, one of the stops we're going to make is at Darenberg. Um, that might be a wine for those of you, again, who are wine drinkers that is familiar to you. Um, Darenberg, the jump and the football. There's a number of ones that um, if you're, for those of you in Ontario at the LCPO or if you're out in BC, you can see these wines from Darenberg. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite envious because, of course, Cassandra is taking you on this on this journey uh, that uh, you're going to be able to see some of those wines. But more importantly, we're going to see some of the smaller uh, vineyards, and that's the exciting part. Um, ones like Vira Vira and Coriol, all these funny names that we won't have heard of because they don't produce enough to export their wine. Um, along the way as well, it's not just about wine. Uh, there's food tastings. Uh, there's uh, farms that we'll, we'll visit. Uh, and uh, mag so-called Maggie beer, which is an icon um, of Australian food. Uh, so after our uh, full, uh, after our couple of nights there in uh, in the McLaren Vale, we're going to be then heading back to the airport in Adelaide and flying up to the north east coast of Australia, um, up to uh, Cairns, which is the the, the gateway. Uh, to the Great Barrier Reef, but we're going to take a drive about 40 minutes outside to a little boutique town um, called Port Douglas, uh, and we'll arrive there in the latter part of the afternoon, probably go out that evening and have a, a good old-fashioned uh, Australian beer uh, and, a, and have a bit of a pub night, um, because of course we have um, a couple of big days ahead of us um, in this um, you know, somewhat remote part of the country up here on the Northeast Coast. People come here because of the Barrier Reef, but not just the Barrier Reef. Um, in fact, the first day that we're in Port Douglas, um, we're going to have our own to perhaps explore some of the other natural wonders that are up there. Um, for example, the Daintree Rainforest, which is the oldest rainforest in the world, is located here uh, adjacent to Port Douglas. So um, we'll, we'll have the day... Um, with uh, with your host, with Cassandra, um, and we'll sort of what we what we typically like to do on our wheel and anchor tr trips is we like to see uh, maybe what what different people like to do. There's options we can go for a canopy tour in the rainforest. Um, uh, there's um, various boat cruises that we can do. So there's a number of different options that we evaluate. We just sort of make a call. Um, we've had a pretty hectic few days up to this point. Um, so for some of you, it may just be a time to just relax um, and enjoy the uh, uh, the waters uh, up here in uh, outside of Port Douglas. Um, and it's the next day uh, that is is really again one of the big highlights of our trip when we head out to the Great Barrier Reef itself. Um, so what happens is we depart um, first thing in the morning. And we head out um, by uh, catamaran to they have these um, large platforms. Um, because the, the reef itself, of course, is a fair distance offshore. So we head by catamaran to um, a big platform, which is the base um, from where you can do all of the activities along the, the, the barrier reef. And when you're there, um, I was at a different part of the Great Barrier Reef some years ago. I can tell you the color of these waters, like you see in the picture, but it's even more vivid when you experience it in person. Really, there is no other place like it and it is absolutely majestic. And, and for me, one of the reasons to visit a place like this is like, you know, for some people, it maybe it's, um, it's like a, another check in the box. Oh, I went to the Great Barrier Reef. But, you know, we've heard so much about climate change and all of the destruction that's being caused to places like the Great Barrier Reef. And when you see this pristine environment for yourself, it just gives you, you know, this is one of the great learnings and the great things that we bring back. So um, when you're there, there'll be snorkeling, there'll be swimming, there's an underwater observatory, there's a bunch of things to do um, that, are, um, that are part, that are included in, in our program. Um, for those that wish, you can go diving, in fact, um, and if you really want to be a bit extravagant, um, you can even uh, catch a helicopter ride back um, to Port Douglas, um, which would fly over the reef, which would be uh, an obviously amazing way um, to experience that. Um, obviously, that's at, uh, at, a, at an extra cost. Um, but, you know, when you're in parts of the world like that, sometimes it's, it's worth it just to, uh, to experience it. So that's, um, that'll be our stay up in Port Douglas and the Barrier Reef area. From here, we'll then fly down the East Coast um, and do the last part of our trip in Sydney. Um, Sydney, of course, the, the economic hub, the largest city of Australia. Um, everybody knows this 
uh, image of the famous Sydney Opera House. Um, which will be part of our trip there. Um, we'll have some time that afternoon, our local host um, will meet us and take us in around an area called the Rocks, which is adjacent to the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Uh, and it's uh, full of you know local little pubs and eateries and so on. So we'll have some time to wander around there. Those that wish um, can, can join our local, um, our local guide who will take us for dinner at um, his favorite place, his or her favorite place, I should say, uh, and uh, otherwise one can go and, and, and find a place to dine on one's own. So I mean, we always offer a little bit of flexibility. Come and join us and, and uh, participate with the group, or alternatively, go out and enjoy that part of town um, on your own. So that'll be our first evening in Sydney. Sydney. Um, then the next day, um, we'll have a full day, um, and we're we're going to make a beeline to go first thing to the Opera House itself. Um, where we're going to have a behind the scenes tour. So I remember when I was in Sydney and I walked around, I must have walked around it four times and I just didn't have the opportunity at the time or I don't remember to go into that opera house. But this thing is amazing. So we were able to get in to do um, a little behind the scenes tour of the opera house. There's constantly things going on. They have like four or five performances every day. Um, but nevertheless, we'll get a sneak peek um, to see what's behind this iconic building. We'll then um, wander down to the pier and we'll get on a ferry and of course many you know Australia as you know is on uh, on this sort of a series of bays uh, so we, we're going to travel with the locals they use the ferry as, as a form of public transportation and we're going to head up to a place called um, Watson's Bay which is one of the suburbs if you will of Sydney so it'll get us a chance to get away from the the CBD and see a little bit of a different part and you know when you look at the suburbs in Sydney my you know uh, my recollection of it is you know it, it's very different than what we know as suburbs back home. Let's just put it that way. So it's really, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, and our, our guide will sort of um, leave us there to our own devices or bring us back into town, uh, back to our hotel. Uh, and you, we can wander around on our own because we're going to be equipped with this 48 hour ferry card that allows us um, unlimited use of the ferry transportation. And there's so many places and so many stops. Um, you're going to see mega mansions, uh, that have all kinds of um, crazy stories behind them. Um, it really is the best way to see Sydney. If you just go up and down on the ferry all day, that in and of itself um, would be an adventure. So that'll be our first day in Sydney. And then the next day, we're going to have a full day um, on our own because, again, we'll have this uh, card that enables us um, the unlimited use of the, the ferry system, the transportation there. Um, and uh, you can move about. Um, you might want to go up to the uh, Taronga Zoo. Um, you might want to go up to the famous beaches like Bondi Beach or Manly Beach. Um, you could do um, the uh, bridge climb. For those of you who don't have a fear of heights, not going to happen for me, um, but uh, um, you could head up. For anybody that's a little bit more um, actively inclined, um, the Blue Mountains are not far away, and they have um, three peaks called the Three Sisters up there. So we will uh, facilitate. That's part of how we do this is that we facilitate whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and then you're free. Um, if we get a group of people together to do one particular thing, then Cassandra will go along and, and do that. Um, otherwise, um, what we found is our members love the fact that they have a chance to kind of venture off and explore on their own. And again, there's so much to do. Um, in Sydney. And um, at that point, the first part of our trip, our Australia portion will, um, will end uh, on the 16th day of our trip. Um, you then have three choices. And again, this is something that we found has found a lot of favor amongst our members because um, you have a bit of flexibility to decide. Either you're going to continue on to New Zealand um, before we do, do um, or you're not, or, or I, I've had a number of people say, oh, I really only want to go to Australia. I've been to New Zealand. Okay, no problem. That's why we've designed it this way. So you will either um, head home or continue on to another destination in, uh, in, in Asia or wherever. Or you can do our Uluru program, which is, of course, Ayers Rock. I'll talk about that in a second. Or you can stay on um, in Sydney for three nights, um, where we'll provide you a hop-on, hop-off pass. And believe me, uh, another will be lost upon you because there are simply so many things to see there. Um, so those are the three options. Um, I... My recommendation, of course, would be to continue on to Uluru uh, and, uh, because, let's face it, this is an icon of Australia. Um, and we 
Um, and I'll explain that we didn't put it into the main program for various reasons, but again, just on feedback from people that have commented on wanting to go to Australia or wanting to go to certain parts of Australia. Um, and so we put that um, as a separate component um, because for some it's of more interest than for others. Um, Uluru, of course, um, Ayers Rock, as it's formerly known, Uluru is, of course, the Aboriginal name for it, is um, an, an incredible icon in, in, in Australia, um, not just for the tourists and the, um, um, uh, how should we say, the, the regular Australians, I gotta put this politically correctly, but of course, Uluru is ex an extremely sacred site um, to the Aboriginal population. So we'll arrive in, we'll fly out in the morning, we'll arrive in the afternoon, we'll have time to explore around. And again, you get a sense from the picture how vast um, this uh, landscape is. Um, we'll perhaps have a chance to take in the, the Field of Lights um, art installation um, or, or go on a camel ride. Um, so there's a number of different things we could do in our first afternoon. Um, in the evening, we're gonna do a good old Aussie style do-it-yourself barbecue. Um, which is uh, going to be amazing as the sun goes down. Um, you get to cook your own um, steak. God knows they have great steak um, in Australia or one of the other um, um, dishes that one might like to prepare. Um, and then there'll be some live entertainment out there at the, um, at the Outback Bar. But you got to go to bed early on this one because um, visiting Uluru is all about the experience that we'll have the next morning, which is, of course, heading to um, Uluru itself, uh, and uh, here we will get up early in the morning, probably four to five o'clock in the morning before sunrise, so that we can experience this firsthand. And um, I can tell you, it is one of those moments that is truly um, in, in incredible when you watch the sunrise and the colors um, uh, of the rock um, as the sun is rising in the morning. Um, they are really um, like no other place. Um, and as I said before, the interesting thing that about Uluru is not just this, the scenic beauty of it, but the fact that, you know, the Anangu people who belong to the oldest culture in the world consider this sort of their most sacred site. Um, and so out of respect to them, um, we won't be climbing up the uh, Uluru, not to mention that it is a little bit hazardous, um, but it's also considered sacred and they... they um, um, casually request that one not climb up it, although people still do. Um, so we'll, uh, uh, yeah, in fact, um, Kiri has just sent me a note here that in fact that the, the climbing is going to be forbidden anyway, and I think it's better that way um, because again, this is a sacred, um, this is a sacred place for the local people. There'll be other things that we can do there. Um, it's a chance to go on a helicopter ride, but more importantly, we'll get a, we'll, we'll, we'll have the opportunity to visit some of the uh, the local um, Aboriginal population and get a sense of what you know life has been like um, for them. So that's all going to be part of our experience there. Well worth the trip up. Um, we'll have a good chunk of the morning the next day. So we're just two nights up in Uluru, um, but we will have two full days um, to experience all of what the Outback and Ayers Rock has before we fly back to Sydney. Um, we'll then just spend one night um, uh, near the airport because we're not going to arrive back until the evening and then the following day um, for those that are ending their uh, Australia adventure at this point they'll fly back home um, failing which those who are um, continuing on with us to New Zealand we will make the flight from Sydney directly over to Queenstown on the South Island uh, and for those who are joining only for New Zealand because as I say I have um, there's a bunch of members who have indicated that they are going to be joining us only for Australia. And at the same time, there's a bunch who um, have already done Australia and they're interested in just coming um, for the New Zealand portion. So that will, um, that will all transpire here on the 13th of November. So if you're coming in from Canada, you'll leave on the 11th or 12th of November um, and you will join us. We will all meet together in Queenstown. And let me show you now the map. Um, of uh, New Zealand, just again, so you get a sense of it, as you know, two islands, Queenston way down in the south, um, which is where we're going to start our trip, and we are going to venture, uh, make our way all the way up the south island, uh, jumping over by plane to the southern tip of the north island, and then ending up in Auckland at the pop. Um, so, 
as I say, we'll arrive in Queenston probably midday. Most of the flights uh, leave, um, most of the flights leave out of Sydney in the, um, uh, in, the, in, the in the morning time. So you'll arrive before noon. Uh, or around noon time. Um, for those that are coming from Canada, you might be arriving a little bit later in the day, but we'll all gather together um, and uh, our, our local guide will meet us at our hotel uh, and will give us a little bit of an orientation tour of Queenstown so that we, um, uh, we can know what we're going to expect because we're going to spend three full nights here. Um, Queenstown, the adventure capital of the world, they say. There's so many things to do, um, but the city itself is quite beautiful. Um, it's, uh, um, it's New Zealand's favorite film location. So they, there's a lot of films. You can kind of get the sense of the, the spectacular backdrop here. Um, it's, uh, uh, as, as Kiri has commented here, it's New Zealand's version of the Canadian Rockies. And if you look at the mountains, the mountains called the Remarkables um, are the ones, uh, and they certainly do look remarkable. Uh, it's uh, as well a foodie paradise here in Queenstown. So um, quite a, a, a great spot to spend a few days. Um, there are our first day, first full day down there, we're going to actually hop on a boat and cross Lake Wakatipu, um, which is the lake on which uh, Queenstown is actually located. Uh, and uh, we're, uh, we're gonna sort of wander our way from um, our hotel down through uh, through the area of um, eateries and pubs, and so we get a sense of for the days that we um, don't uh, have a have a meal in in the program. There's lots of great places to choose from. Um, then we'll hop on the boat, we'll cross over Lake Wakatipu on a vintage steamship. It'll be quite a unique experience in and of itself. And then we arrive at Walter Peak Farm, um, which is on the other side of the lake, and we'll have a demonstration of what farming in New Zealand is all about. So I'm sure we'll probably see a few sheep along the way, as you know. There's quite a few of them there. We'll get a demonstration of the farm. Um, we'll have um, lunch there as well, and then we'll come back um, to, uh, to Queenstown later in the, in the afternoon. So that'll be our, our first day in, uh, in the city. And then the second day, we'll again have to rest up because we have quite a long day. On the 15th of November, we're gonna head out early in the morning, and we're gonna get, head right down to practically the southernmost tip of uh, the South Island to a place called Doubtful Sound. So <clears throat> for those of you that have done your research already on New Zealand, um, most tourists head for Milford Sound, which is um, the larger of the fjords in this, in this region that, that they call Fjordland. Um, but because most of the tourists go that way, we're going this way. Um, it's one of my philosophies. Um, and we're gonna head into this place called Doubtful Sound. We're gonna have a boat trip down here, um, first of all on Lake Manapuri, uh, and then we're gonna make our way into the fjord itself. Um, besides this incredible scenery, for those of you that have been in Norway before, it, it, I swear you'd think you were in Norway. I mean, the steep cliffs rising out of the, uh, out of the waters, um, it's amazing. There's also um, dolphins and fur seals and penguins. Um, it's, it's going to be a, a most memorable day. Um, you never know what the weather's going to bring, of course, um, in coastal climates like this. Um, but from what I've heard, um, whether it rains, whether it's sun, no matter what the weather, um, you will have a magical experience. We'll be gone all day. I think the whole trip is about 13 hours in duration, so we won't get, be getting back to Queenstown until the evening. But um, scenery-wise, it will be one of the absolute highlights of the trip. We'll have a full day then, um, the next day, um, free in Queenstown. And again, the reason behind that is because um, we want you to have the opportunity to see and do things on your own. There's so many things to do. Here's an interesting tidbit for those of you who are really adventurous. Um, Queenstown is the heart of where a gentleman by the name of A.J. Hackett in, um, uh, invented bungee jumping. So you can go to this original inventor and actually go bungee jumping. I'm not sure how many of you will do that, but then again, I've seen a lot in my years of uh, traveling, so I wouldn't be surprised, but that is something that you could do. You could do a jet boat ride up the canyon, um, or again, we for the, those that are like a little bit more active, uh, we may go for a hike on the so-called Tiki Track, um, which will give us some incredible sights at view, sunset views over the lake, um, over the mountains in the background. Um, no matter what, we'll have a magical day in Queenstown. Um, and from Queenstown, then we'll embark on our, um, 
by the bus and we'll head north up to Lake Tacapo. Te um, so once again, you know, the South Island is really about the mountains and the scenic beauty, and this is part of it um, here in Lake Tacapo. Um, but what, what makes this particular place most famous, and one of the reasons I wanted to stop here on our way north, is because it's part of the UNESCO Dark Sky Reserve. Uh, and so at nighttime, and so part of our itinerary actually takes place in the evening, um, is one of the places in the world where you have an incredible um, uh, view of the, of the heavens and the stars. Um, and so um, there's that, and it's also known for its hot springs, uh, and so we'll, we'll take a visit to the hot springs and in flat fact, um, you can actually lie in the nighttime on a hammock in the hot springs and see um, the southern constellations, the southern, the southern stars. So this, this will be quite, uh, uh, quite a highlight. Um, and then we will continue then driving north um, up towards uh, Christchurch, uh, which will be our next stop. Uh, and uh, Christchurch is, I should mention as well, from um, as we as we head in um, Lake Tacapo, you have incredible views of Mount Cook, which is the highest mountain in New Zealand. So we'll we'll see that as well. But we'll continue up to Christchurch, and we'll head out of sort of the the high mountains into more um, subdued rolling hills, um, as you get a sense here. Christchurch is a very English town, um, and the 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 thing that's perhaps one of the things that's most notable about it is the fact that uh, sadly an earthquake struck here. Many of you will remember back in 2011, it killed quite a few people. So the city is still in a, in a, in a, a phase of rebuilding. And so, you know, it's not often actually that you get to visit a city um, that has had such a devastating tragedy and is still in the process of recovering from that. Um, and so that's one of the things that we'll um, sort of explore. There's a, there's a memorial to the, to the lives that were lost. Um, and you'll see evidence still of, of, of this um, regeneration that's going on. Christchurch um, has a, a, a wonderful little um, 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 set of botanic gardens that we can visit. Uh, and uh, there's about 60 acres of them. And once again, for those who, the, that are a little bit more actively inclined, um, one of the things that was recommended to, to me to do by my uncle, actually, who's lived down in Christchurch, um, is to take a hike along Godly Head, um, which offers some spectacular views out, um, out over the ocean. Um, you'll find the people here in Christchurch and, frankly, all of the South Island super friendly. I mean, I think all New Zealanders are friendly, um, and I'm not just uh, saying that because Kiri is from there. Um, but I do think that they are uh, they're super friendly people and uh, we'll have a great time while we're enjoying um, Christchurch. From Christchurch, now we um, hop on a plane uh, where we'll then leave the South Island and then head up to the North Island to Wellington, um, which is on the south part of the North Island. Uh, and uh, it's a very windy city, right? Because it sits uh, on the, the um, uh, Cook Inlet, uh, the, sorry, the Cook Strait, which separates separates the North and the South Islands. You have these constant winds that blow um, and uh, we'll have some time on the afternoon that we arrive there after our flight over to um, check it out on our own. Perhaps uh, you'll wander over to this uh, funicular that they have, the only one in all of New Zealand um, that goes up to the Botanical Gardens. But Wellington is actually known for one thing and it has apparently the most restaurants per capita of any city in the world. I had, must say I was not aware of that before. Uh, and uh, so uh, there'll be no shortage of places to, uh, to eat, to dine in Wellington. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I say, that, that'll certainly um, give us lots of things to do. Um, New Zealand's parliament is, of course, in uh, Wellington. They call it the Beehive. Uh, and we'll pass by that when we, um, when we do our tour um, then the next day. <clears throat> Um, so, um, after we've spent, uh, okay, I just missed something here. After we spent a full day in, uh, in Wellington, um, we're then going to fly up to, um, Rotorua, um, which is a little bit further up. It's towards the North coast of the North Island. Um, and of course, Rotorua is, um, is most known for its geysers and hot springs and mud pools. Um, people come, in fact, from all over, not just Australia, New Zealand, but from all over Asia to Rotorua because um, of this, uh, of this, you know, these wondrous 
um, these geothermal, geothermal activity that occurs here. Um, so we'll, uh, we're, we'll arrive in the afternoon, we'll probably already have a chance to visit some hot springs, um, but um, the next day we'll do a tour um, uh, about the historic center of Rotorua, because Rotorua is actually, although it's most known for the, the geysers and the mud pools and so on, um, it's actually a center of Maori culture. And, and, and again, as many of you may be familiar with the Maori culture, that is New Zealand's Aboriginals. Uh, and it's um, the North Island um, contains more of that culture than the South Island. So here's where we're going to take uh, a little bit of a greater insight into that. Um, um, and we're going to have a so-called splashdown um, at both Lake Tikitaku and Lake Okarika, um, which are two of the places where we um, where we get to experience these uh, these these hot springs. Um, in the evening of that day in Rotorua, we're going to have uh, a hangi dinner. A hangi dinner is a Maori cultural um, experience. Lots of food. Um, they love to share uh, their food, their culture, their songs. Um, it's really a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, um, you know, I, I know that uh, I've, I, I, I've done lots of these kinds of um, sort of folklore experiences before, but with the Maori, it's, it's, really, um, it's really quite touching. Uh, so I think that this, this experience in the evening is going to be one that, uh, once again, is going, to be, is going to be very, very memorable. Um, we uh, uh, do the last leg of our trip overland. Um, we have a, about a three, four hour drive from Rotorua up to Auckland. Uh, the, um, and Auckland, of course, the, the capital and the major city. Uh, and we're going to, we, we spent the last couple of nights here. And, and as I said before, um, the, the North Island is really all about the Maori who originate. They're, they're basically Polynesian. So they're, they, they're related to um, the Aboriginal populations in the, um, in the, Pacific Ocean and the um, Southern Islands like Bora Bora and Tahiti and all the rest of it and French Polynesia, they're all part of the same um, sort of a, a culture. So we'll explore some of that um, while we're in Auckland and we'll, of course we'll see Auckland itself. Um, it's another harbor city. So it's interesting of note that we sort of, we end our Australia portion in Sydney, which of course is, is known for its harbors and all its sailboats. Um, and then and in, um, Auckland as well, the city of sales. Uh, it's a beautiful city. We'll spend half the day touring around with our local guide uh, and the other half the day we'll have um, to enjoy it on our own. And again, there's a myriad of sites. Um, although it's the end of the trip, um, I would fully imagine some people will want to spend a few extra days in Auckland. Um, and that's certainly uh, an option. So some of you might remember actually that uh, 2021, Sorry, the year 2020-21 is the America's Cup sailing competition is going to be held out of Auckland. So, of course, there's a lot of um, activity about that. I remember seeing that um, when I was down in San Francisco. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, they take their sailing uh, very seriously down there. So we'll probably see some preparations um, for that when, we, uh, when we're in Auckland in uh, November of next year. Um, so that... Uh, we'll wrap up and round out our uh, tour of Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and so on our last day in November the 26th, um, if for those who've done both Australia and New Zealand, we'll have gone, been gone for almost a whole month. Um, but I, as I always say, November is a great time to not be uh, at home in Canada. <laughs> so, and, and it's a perfect time um, to visit Australia and New Zealand. So let me take you through um, a few of the details. Um, and I'll say at this point, we have, of course, our regular, uh, well, not regular, but our wonderful brochure that is coming out on this program. It is literally just in the files, final stages of being compiled. Um, and I expect it to be released by early next week. Um, there is a great call for this program. People have been asking for it for several months. Um, so I'm excited to be releasing it. And you will all get copies the moment uh, that it comes off the press, as it were. Of course, we're sending it electronically. Um, uh, and so all of the, the uh, much greater detail about the day-to-day -day itinerary is in there, um, as well as all the other information you need to know. But just to let you know some of the key um, uh, information about this uh, is that the, uh, the uh, Australia program is... Uh, is the land portion of the program and land and all the domestic flights 
um, is at 6950 uh, per person based on double occupancy. Everything in Canadian dollars, of course, as usual. Um, those that want to do the Uluru adventure, um, so the three nights in Uluru, um, that's at 1290. Um, and 1690 single and then um, the information there actually isn't totally accurate so if you are planning to do Australia don't wish to go to Uluru but want to do an extension in Sydney um, the price is about $690 so we'll get you the details on that um, um, soon of course what all that includes um, is important um, all of the transportation as we've noted um, it's private transfers or it's it's I should say a it's a, a, a shuttle transfer on an individual basis. And that's important because you can arrive at any time that you want. Um, depending on when everybody's gonna arrive, Cassandra host is, tries to meet everybody in person at the airport. Uh, and uh, so you don't need to worry about coming together. I don't really believe in hurting together everybody uh, as a group onto the same flight. It's logistically very difficult because I know our members are coming from all across Canada and we'll go different ways. So in any event, we'll get you from the airport to the hotel and back. Um, 13 nights in hand-picked hotels, and there's some really lovely hotels on this program. We have some heritage hotels um, that we're staying in, uh, some, some wonderful properties. The details will be in the brochure. All of the domestic airfares, your local guiding, um, a lot, lot of the meals on average, two meals a day, in some cases three, um, entrance fees, and of course services of your host, Cassandra. Um, so again, when we do something, we try to include as much as makes sense. And that's the case here with Australia. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the Uluru adventure, so those who want to, to carry on for the, for the uh, two nights up uh, at uh, Uluru, um, that will include um, two nights in the outback at a wonderful lodge, uh, and uh, as well as the domestic airfare, and then another night of accommodation because we don't arrive back until the evening. Um, at Sydney Airport um, and all of the local guiding. If there are enough uh, of members who sign up for this, we're gonna have a special program at Uluru um, called Cave Hill um, that involves uh, involvement with the local Aboriginal. I fully suspect because the level of interest on this program is such that I would imagine we will have enough um, people to be able to do that. And I will provide details as well um, when, we, when the brochure is released. Um, so that's the Uluru adventure. And then finally, um, again, if uh, one prefers just to stay in Sydney, we have, um, uh, we'll set you up for another three nights, um, as well as a hop on, hop off, hop off sightseeing pass um, that will enable you to, uh, to take in a little bit more of Sydney. The New Zealand portion of the program, so there's Australia and there's New Zealand, you can do one or uh, sort of either or, or both. Um, and that will come in at 6490 um, Canadian dollars uh, based on double or 8180 uh, for those that would like a single room. Uh, and again, we'll provide all of the details in the brochure, but of course, same thing. Transfers are going to be provided, all the accommodation, and again, wonderfully handpicked hotels. Um, I've spent a lot of time going through all these with Kiri, and uh, we, um, I think we've got, we've got some, some great accommodations. Um, local guiding in Kiwi English, so you might have to tune your ears a little bit to that. Um, but for the most part, it'll be quite understandable. Uh, and all of the touring insights, um, as per usual, are included in that program. As for airfare, um, as I've mentioned a few times in this presentation, we like to provide an airfare arrangement that is um, customized to you. Um, so that whether you are going to Australia only, or if you're doing just New Zealand, or if you're doing both, there are a number of options out there. Um, and so uh, I know that um, um, some people prefer to fly on Air Canada with aeroplan miles or buy their or use their miles to book a ticket in, in a premium economy or business class. In any event, we'll, we will ensure that um, you get an airfare routing that suits you best. So I've put on here an indication of what um, the airfares are that are sort of currently available. These change all the time. This program, though, is um, obviously 15 months away, 16 months away from now. So there's lots of time. You can't even book your airfare now. You have to wait until 11 months prior. So, but it's a good time to start thinking about that, particularly if you, uh, you know, I, I find a lot of people going down to um, Australia, New Zealand, say well, we're going to stop over in Hong Kong for a few days and fly Cathay Pacific. Uh, or even via Hawaii, there's a, there's a, a million different ways to do it. Um, we're here to 
making sure that um, that works for you. The only thing, not, of course, not included in our program is uh, cancellation insurance, medical insurance. We can provide uh, we'll full support that you get the right um, um, policy that uh, suits you best, any other meals and beverages. But as you know, um, from most of our programs, pretty much um, everything except those bunch of meals and so on are included in the main program. So, of course, if you have any questions, and we're about to go to the Q&A section, and I see that a few questions have come in um, already, uh, and a couple of the questions I was uh, hoping that Kiri would be able to answer for us, but unfortunately, we're not able to tune her in this evening, so I will do, do my best to answer those questions. If there are any other questions that you have, um, oh yeah, Kiri's still here. Okay, fine. <laughs> She's just... Uh, uh, she's here in spirit. Um, so if we get any other questions, uh, then we'll, um, by all means, drop me an email, drop Cassandra an email, and uh, we, will, uh, we will get your questions answered. Uh, so first of all here, I see, let's see, go to the list of questions. Aha. Uh, Mary asked about, um, I've heard there are all kinds of dangerous creatures in Australia. Will I be safe? <laughs> Good question. I heard the same thing, actually. They, they say in Australia, if it moves, it might kill you. Um, so uh, here's the thing. Generally speaking, we're not going to encounter any of those creatures. Uh, but at the same time, they are around. I mean, Australia is notorious from having you know, these poisonous snakes and scorpions and spiders and all the rest of it. My own personal experiences there is I didn't see any of them. Um, and so, um, you know, we're going to try to show you some, um, but we're going to keep you... Uh, you know, you'll be out of harm's way. Um, you know, there there are a few rules of thumb, you know, when you're in the outback, you know, you shake out your shoes in case something has decided to crawl in there. Uh, I mean, there's there's a few rules of thumb, but I'm curious, just men comment to me either. I mean, she lives down there and she hasn't seen any of these things either. So I think that um, you'll be quite fine. Um, John from Toronto asked about what's the weather like uh, at this time of the year. So this is October is Australia and uh, in November in New Zealand. Um, this is springtime uh, in that part of the world. Um, and we chose it because um, it, it, it's, it's a, a, lovely, a lovely time of the year. It's starting to warm up. It's not, you don't have that summer heat like you have in January. We wouldn't go then. It's just too much too hot. Um, but you could have cooler days, particularly when you're up in, uh, or when you're down in the South Island in New Zealand. Um, it, it could be a little bit cooler, but I mean, you know, we're talking 10 degrees, um, I think maybe at the coolest. Um, generally speaking, I think we'll probably have temperatures in the high teens and, or, uh, and low 20s. Um, it'll be warmer for sure, um, obviously up at Cairns because we're further up in, into a, a sort of a tropical belt. Um, but it won't be super hot. You know, it's again, my rule of thumb for any of these kinds of trips where we're covering a lot of geography is bring layers. And of course, number one rule of thumb for Australia is bring sunscreen um, because the sun's rays are very strong. They're stronger than at, at home. Um, Teresa asked, um, how big are the groups? Um, the group sizes. So we're targeting a group of, I like to say for a program like this, no more than uh, 20 people. Um, we will run it with um, as few as I think 14 or maybe even 12. Um, but, uh, and I would imagine based on the response so far that we'll probably get to 20, but we won't take more. Um, that's pretty much the, the right number for a program like this. Um, uh, Chris asked, if this is a yearly program, we'll be offering this program in 2021. I would say there's a very good chance that we will. Uh, we sort of look at things. We, we really, it's all about what our members tell us and ask us uh, in terms of uh, will they, you know, is there enough demand? And if there is, we'll uh, obviously offer it again. My sense, uh, again, is, you know, from the number of people who signed up from this webinar, it was well over 50. Uh, and from the number of people who've indicated on their questionnaires that they are determined to get to Australia and New Zealand, I expect we'll be running this um, more often. However, I will say as well about as with any of our programs, um, we we are not we are not uh, like G Adventures. We're not one of these big companies that runs the same tour over and over and over again. Because I believe in continuous improvement. 
every time we do a tour. So with little things to change, we might say, well, let's go here instead of there. Maybe we'll include Western Australia next time. So this exact program may or may not be offered again, but we'll definitely be going back to Australia and New Zealand. Have no fear. Um, then um, Mike asked a question about uh, currency and will you be doing the same thing with expenses as you've done with other groups? Yes. So um, what Mike is referring to is um, dealing with local currency. It's a little bit easier, of course. Australia, New Zealand, everybody speaks English. Um, they use dollars. I mean, they're not, they're close to what our dollars are in Canada, but they're not the same. Um, but I have this uh, little uh, program and Cassandra will, will be taking it as well, where um, whenever we go out for a lunch as a group that's not included or for drinks or something like that, um, we'll um, pay the whole bill for everybody and make a note of it and then give you an expense thing at the end. It's one of the little added features that we do at Wheel and Anchor um, that just makes it a lot easier so you don't have to worry about having change on you and small bills and, and, and all the rest of this kind of stuff. So um, yes, we will be we will be doing that. And good, I think that rounds out the questions. Um, if you do have any more, as I say, by all means, please um, email them to me um, or you can let me know before we um, finish off the webinar. Yeah, we've got uh, just a few minutes left to go. So um, I think at this point we will wrap up. Thank you all for coming out this morning, um, particularly those who got up extra early out in the West Coast. Uh, it has been a pleasure once again to share with you this uh, great Wheel and Anchor program that we're going to be having. Um, and as I say, as soon as the brochure uh, comes out um, next week, you will all get it in your inboxes. And I imagine we're contemplating a little special offer um, for, for those who are ready to book right away. So um, details will be available next week. Uh, and um, uh, Kiri has just mentioned to me that she's actually headed down to Tasmania this coming weekend. So she's going to make a little video and share it with us for those who are interested in finding out what that part of the trip is about. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, and I look forward to uh, meeting up with some of you as I uh, make my way out to the East Coast um, next month, as well as some events across Ontario. Um, have yourselves a great day. And uh, next week, we have our Austria Spa and Wellness webinar. So stay tuned for that.